busy day, busy day. At least for me today, it being Sunday and all. Lots to do, and we're starting it off with uh, what we do for every Monday. We're getting very far down the list now, alphabetically. We are now in whatever after is T, which would be U. And there is only uh, one U state. Very surprising. Um, it is the state of Utah, which is a very, very interesting state for many reasons. As you see here, it is in the basically west, not Midwest. It's in the mountain region. And as you can see, you got Wyoming to the north and Idaho to the west, Nevada to the south. You got Arizona. And to the east, again, Colorado and parts of Wyoming. Its capital is Salt Lake City. Um, it's uh, just like Nevada. A lot of people don't live in a lot of this, uh, this state. You got people here and a little bit down here. But what makes this place real weird is the Great Salt Lake, which is a salt lake, which is great. I flown over it once, and it was, I was very surprised at how large it was. I mean, comparatively speaking, to places like Rhode Island, it almost look, I think it might be bigger than the entire state of Rhode Island. It's probably like half the size of Utah, or Utah, New Jersey. Anyway, this place is very, very weird, comparatively speaking, to um, the rest of the country, mainly just having to do with, uh, it's, I think it's the only state in the country that is predominantly um, one religion. Like the highest percentage of people. More than half the people in this uh, state are Mormons. Members of the Church of Jesus Christ of the Latter-day Saints, LDS. Uh, I don't know how much of these commercials ever like permeated the culture of uh, other parts of the world. But let's, well, I'm getting a little ahead of myself. Let's, uh, Manti LaSalle National Forest. Am I going to find Manti LaSalle National Forest here? I doubt it. But I'll zoom in a little bit to see if I can't see. Uh, uh, it's not popping up here. I feel like this is a uh, very big, uh, I mean, a very small amount of like national forest land, and it's not like here. Give me the name of this goddamn place. It's not. It's that's annoying. All right, let's stop. Wait, Monte LaSalle. So we have all of this, this giant chunk of land here. So at least I have a place to uh, work from. Anyway, let's get the uh, basics down of the state itself. Oh, we're in uh, spring, I think. So we got some mountain snow. Uh, capital is Salt Lake City, which is. Uh, a little farther north, it's right there. I'm just keeping myself focused right here because I want to try to get where we are. Um, it is the uh, 45th state admitted to the Union on uh, January 4th, 1896. It's a late bloomer. And I didn't know this about the place itself, but there was... Uh, oh, we got the Utah Highway Patrol because apparently another nickname of this place is the Beehive State. It's also the Mormon state, and its motto is Desiree, which I should probably look up to find out what the meaning is, but I'm really hoping to actually get like a root sign somewhere. Maybe I should go around. Ephraim Public Works. We're in Ephraim. Okay, I see. Let's see if I can't get an intersection name here. There is none on this. Utah has some very interesting road signage for uh like a lot of places i think most oh, we do have oh god i wasn't gonna get it in time most of the uh um roads in all the states kind of worded this way where you see it says west 200 south east 200 south um a lot of i think a lot of places like this but for some whatever reason the majority of utah um, road names never really bothered to change the wording. 
and they just kind of kept it this way. So it's very strange when I'd see a lot of addresses for places in Utah compared to other places in the U.S. and be like, man, they do their wording weird. Um, anyway, January 4th, 1896, 45th State Union. It is the 13th largest in area, which is just under 85,000 square miles. It is highest elevation is King's Peak at 13,000 feet, which is pretty high. Lowest is 2,180, which is right on the Arizona border. Population is 3.2 mil, which is 30th in the country. Density rank making it's very 41st in the country, so it's a very not dense state. As I said before, people live here and kind of there and nowhere else. Um, Medium household household income is sixty eight thousand, making it fourteenth. Um, a lot of the state here, you got a lot of tourists because you've got Salt Lake's the Great Salt Lake, which is a literal Salt Lake. Uh, you have a lot of skiing around, like I think um, Provo. Uh, anything you see here with like little logos and whatnot, I'm pretty sure it's all skiing. And if not skiing, it they're very tall mountains. Uh, a lot of nothing, uh, and then kind of down here too. Oh, okay, that was the basics. Um, where to start first? So, well, historically, we'll say the the first couple of people to ever live here again, Native Americans. You had the Utes, the uh, U-T-E-S. Is this? Yeah, we're on one lane of road here. Usually, they don't have the mileage markers on the left hand side. That's weird that it was on that side. Um. You had the Utes. It was a, I believe they're, uh, 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 Pueblo? I could be wrong. Like a subdivision. Um, even though the Utes themselves apparently call themselves Nuchi, or Nochi, N-O-O-C-H-E-E, -E, which, the meaning of Utes itself is mountain people. Um, so, I mean, there's a lot of mountains here. It's, yeah, basins. The Great Basin is kind of the thing that's all over uh, uh, Nevada and a little bit of Utah, mostly the this this chunk here. Now get off my screen, thank you. I have a nondescript but very beautiful chunk of road to try to figure out where we are, and I'm not seeing it. This road has not been paved in a long time. Is getting very ragged here. Can I can I get like a root marker on one of these? Not nah, just mile thirty one. Does not help me. This might. We're adopting a highway with uh, Mount Ogden Rotary Club. So where is Mount Ogden? Probably near Ogden, if I had to guess. Can I find a Mount Ogden somewhere? Mount Ogden. There's Mount Ogden. So maybe we're we're over here somewhere, next to Sardine Peak. I'll put us on 226, like, right there. Just to, just to give ourselves a, a location of sorts. Uh, so yeah, you had the Native Americans here. Um, then eventually the Spanish came in from the south, because if you do not remember, back before this became part of the U.S., uh, Spanish had here, and they kind of owned all of this chunk here. Then they lost it during the Spanish-American War. Um, and before they actually uh, 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 lost the war. No, the war was in, and I am scattered here. Let's start again. So Native Americans here. Then you had fur trappers. Uh, as the Spanish came in, they were uh, leaving from Santa Fe, trying to find a route to California. They got as far north as Utah Lake, which I have no idea where that is. I'm going to guess this is probably Utah Lake, yeah. So they were leaving from Santa Fe. If you remember, this is the oldest town to be a capital. Made it all the way up here, trying to get to there. So they kind of got lost. I mean, just go west, idiots. It's not that hard. And let's see here. 
encountered Native American native residents. Spanish made further explorations into the region, but were not interested in colonizing the area because of its desert nature. It is a pretty arid, at least for the, the, the part they got to. Where was I? Where was my spot? In 1821, the year Mexico achieved independence from Spain, the region became known as part of a territory of Alta California, which is a huge chunk of land, kind of like, uh, if I had to look at it, it's like, eh, eh, all of this. A little bit of this province came up like that, but it was a big chunk. Um, so... Oh, ran out of time. I was pretty close. I'm, I'm okay with this score here. So, European trappers and fur traders explored some of the areas of Utah in early 19th century from Canada and the U.S. The city of Provo, which was named for Etienne Provost, who visited the area in 1825. Provo, which I showed was right next to about where the Spanish came to, the city of Ogden, Utah, which is farther north, right up here, pretty close to where we were, uh, was named after Peter Skeen Ogden, who was a Canadian explorer who traded furs in the Weber Valley, which I'm assuming is probably where Ogden is. In late 1824, Jim Bridger became the first known English-speaking person to sight the Great Salt Lake. Uh, due to high salinity of its waters, he thought he had found the Pacific Ocean, which I guess is a fair assumption you can make subsequently learned the body of water was a giant salt lake. After the discovery of the lake, hundreds of American and Canadian traders and trappers established trading posts in the region. In 1830, thousands of migrants traveling from eastern United States to American West began to make stops in the region of the Great Salt Lake, then known as Lake Utah, Y-O-U-T-A. So you had U.S. own this, U.S. was over here, you didn't own this, so they had to cross this way, and I guess this was a natural trading uh, pit stop trading post, even though it doesn't make any sense because it's a goddamn salt lake. You can't drink it. But that's a whole other point. I'm not a logistical person. Anyway, let's go to the next round. So, as I'm trying to guess where this is, I'm just going to make a um, suggestion. The buzz Honeypot deals. Never trust a honeypot. Uh, before I go into the Mormon stuff, we're in KSL AM 1080. Nice. There are some decent podcasts you can listen to who will explain better the history of Mormonism. And, I mean, there's also the, uh, it's a little bit, um, uh, 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 what's the satirical, but also not because they do give it a fair shake at the end there is the uh south park episode or i think it might have been a couple episodes they did on the history of mormonism with uh, joseph smith going dumb 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 it's pretty funny tug in cheek but uh they they didn't really just like completely completely lampoon them there's also a podcast from uh, last podcast on the left, there's a series of them. It might be like five episodes, four episodes on the history of Mormonism, which is a bit more like, eh, when they talk about the uh, origins of it and kind of how it came around. Because, you know, flimsy to say the best, but honestly, comparing it to most other religions, who knows if it's any less weird. But, um, gents hairstyling, huh? Really hoping to get like a, a sign somewhere here, but I'm not getting it. But anyway, as that said, uh, what was his name? Joseph Smith, I believe. Yes. Um, tried a bunch of different places to get his religion off the ground. Um, like I think his uh, theory was that the Native Americans were either descendants of or a branch off of Israelites or Jewish people, somehow making it all the way over there, golden plates, him only being able to see them, blah, 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 polygamy, other things, even though polygamy wasn't that big, it was a huge issue for them to actually become a state. A lot of times being rejected, there was wars fought over it. 
ethanol free gas this is not the name of the town i'm hoping for i do see a road with a bridge i doubt this is a highway but it could be so i'm going to try to get on it can i get there thank you although this just seems to be more of the town i do see a sign over here come on i thought that was a sign i got a minute 10 left and i've got oh okay that's what i'm looking for You've got the Forest Service of the Black Lives Matter, Price River Drive, and Carbonville Road. Neither of those things are helpful. Combo at KFC A and W. Interesting. Uh, here's a sign. This may help me. All right. We've got where to go. Well, we passed it. All right, here we go. We got Wellington, Helper, and Salt Lake. 35 seconds. Salt Lake's over here. Wellington and Helper, huh? Hmm. I'm just going to put us near Farmington just to maybe get a region, but I'm not I'm not getting anything helping me here. I really Okay, we do have a route. I've got seven seconds and I've clicked too far. God damn it. Route 6, 191. Route 6, 191. I ran out of time. Farther south. Silly me. Anyway, so after a failed establishment of a colony in a place called Nauvoo, Illinois, the, I think they might have just gotten evicted because there was, there was some fighting between the Mormons there and all the other people surrounding Nauvoo. Uh, they got evicted. I think the National Guard of Illinois was called in, kicked them out. There was fighting, gunfights. And I think they finally decided, yo, let's get out. I mean, I think there's still some remnants in Nauvoo of uh, the Mormons, but nothing like what they ended up actually doing in the state of Salt Lake. So following the death of Joseph Smith in 1844, he might have been tarred and feathered. I could be wrong. Uh, Brigham Young, as the president of the Quorum of the Twelve, which I guess is just like their... CEO branch, I guess, became effective leader of the LDS, which Latter day Saints, you know, the word for the Mormons, in Nauvoo, which I was talking about. N A U V O O, if you want to check them out yourself. To address growing conflicts between his people and their neighbors, Young agreed with the Illinois governor in October of 1845 that they need to leave by the following next year. So his band of Mormon pioneers reached Salt Lake City on July 24, 1847. Over the next 22 years, more than 70,000 pioneers crossed the plains and settled into Utah. For the first few years, Brigham Young and thousands of early settlers of Salt Lake City struggled to survive because it's a salt lake, very arid and dry. It's kind of a desert, you know, if you remember from what the Spanish were saying. Uh, let's see here. But they, decided they want to live there because they were free of harassment. Kind of just like when the pilgrims came over to this part of the world to avoid per persecution. Uh, let's see. Uh, first group of settlers brought African slaves with them, making Utah the only place in the western U.S. to have African, ugh, African slavery. Uh, let's see here. Utah was a Mexican territory when the first pioneers arrived, and early in the Mexican-American War, the U.S. had taken control over New Mexico and California. The entire Southwest became U.S. territory upon the signing of the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo in February of 48. Uh, first, Utah wanted to become like a territory, but when they saw that uh, California and New Mexico wanted to be a state, they said, well, shit, let us do it. And they wanted to create something called the State of Deseret, D E. S-E-R-E-T, which had a pretty cool flag, but the actual size of the state itself was, like, absurdly huge. So it went down to California here, a little bit up here. Uh, there's an image of this also on Wikipedia, so I'm going to tr trace this to the best of my ability. Had a little chunk of New Mexico, about a third of Colorado, this little nugget into Wyoming, and honestly, Wyoming wouldn't have missed it. They got rid of most of Idaho, because who wants that? A little, basically all Nevada, except a little chunk up here. A little wing of Idaho, Oregon, and then a um, little bit, a little bit. So that's a giant-ass state. 
let's see here. But once they kind of ended up becoming the state, uh, Deseret really didn't happen. Really cool. Little flag. I got a terrible score. I was expecting better. I just didn't get enough time to see where we were. Uh, let's see. We got a hospital on exit 228. This sign will help me. We're on North Main Street for business Route 15 on 28. Do you see the beehive? That's their route sign. I feel like we got to... Okay, there's Interstate 15, which is here. So we're going to zoom in a bit and look for 28 to give ourselves an idea where we are. I am not seeing it yet. I am getting concerned. Is it not in here? It is not in here. 28, where are you? Come on. Don't do this to me. I don't want to waste all my time looking for this route on the business Interstate 15. But if I have to, here we go. So we're like over here, I think. Because there's an exit there. We're like right there. I have a feeling. We're going back that way. But as you can see, the landscape of this place, very mountainous, very dry. Uh, Deserty. You got some snow, but really nothing sustainable. Mm. Anyway, to continue. So, let's see here. Uh, bu -bu 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 -bum. This is not what I'm looking for. Oh, apparently they wanted to call it Deseret because, according to the Book of Mormon, it was an ancient word for honeybee. This symbolized by the beehive on the Utah flag and its state motto, industry, at least at the time. Uh, let's see. Utah territory was much smaller than what I said for Deseret, but it still uh, contained all of Nevada and Utah, and little nuggets of Wyoming and Colorado, and then they pared it down a little bit more from that. Um, during the Compromise of 1850. Uh, let's see here. Fillmore, which was after William Fillmore, was the capital at the time, if I can actually find that here. Let's see. Is it actually going to show it on here? Let's Let's take a look here. I'm just going into another tab. Oh, that is, that is south from Salt Lake City. There's Fillmore. This was it. Uh, but it didn't stay that way for very long. Let's see here. Do, do, do. By 1850, there were around 100 blacks, the majority of whom were slaves. And Salt Lake County, 26 slaves were counted. In 1852, territorial legislature passed the Act in Relation to Service and the Act for, for, Act for the Relief of Indian Slaves and Prisoners, formally legalizing slavery in the territory. However, at the end of the Civil War, it was abolished. Let's see here. Uh, a lot of fighting between uh, Mormon, inhabit Mormon inhabitants in the U.S. government mainly because of plural marriage, they called it, or polygamy. Um, there was a lot of uh, books, like Brigham Young having a bunch of wives. One of them actually left and wrote a book about it, testified in front of Congress. Congress was like, yo, we can't have this. And the Mormons were like, we kind of don't want to give this up. But eventually, there was a compromise saying, like, if you want to be a state, you got to abolish this polygamy thing and most of them were okay with it but the ones that still wanted to do practice polygamy i believe they ended up moving to mexico and they're still there now and in fact there is a documentary i believe it's from vice talking about the uh mormon uh compounds down there and how they're basically having gunfights with the uh gang slash mafias in Mexico. It's pretty interesting. Uh, where are we? 
in the desert somewhere. I don't know if I'm actually ever going to find this one. But there's also some weird little anecdotal stuff having to do with um, Mexico, New Mexico, Utah. Um, and for a long time it was like this, at least with um, drinking. Because I don't know if you ever heard or remember, there was a prohibition age in um, the U.S. for a set amount of time, but eventually they got rid of it. And there's still these things called dry counties throughout the U.S. even now, where counties don't have any alcohol. Any Highway 56, I don't know if this is going to help me. It's Highway 56, huh? Let's look for a 56 real quick. I got a minute left. Well, three minutes left. Don't see it. Okay. Get me back on the screen here. Let's figure out where we are. But it's still kind of a catchy or testy subject, depending on where you are. There's these weird out, outliers, outcrops, whatever you want to call it, of the... Uh, Newcastle Ward Youth. That does not help me. Can I see a Newcastle anywhere really quick? Excuse me, I do not. Okay, no, let's uh, keep going. Hopefully find it soon. Anyway, um, frequent deer crossing. That doesn't help me. Utah had some weird rules. Um, if you wanted to drink in the state, you had to have a license or a permit of some sort and you're only allowed to drink at one bar uh, if you wanted to drink at a bar you had to apply to drink at that bar there was a form you had to fill out to actually get like a license and or permit to be like i'm allowed to drink at this bar here's my card saying so uh as of recently they've gotten rid of that though let's see here utah is an alcoholic beverage control state uh, the Utah Department of Alcoholic Beverage Control, which regulates the sale of alcohol, wine, and spiritus liquors may be purchased only at state liquor stores, and local laws may prohibit the sale of beer and other alcoholic beverages on Sundays. Um, I believe it was for a time, maybe still is, that only a certain um, AB alcohol by volume percentage beer could only be sold in the state. like. Something like 3% was the max you could have in your beer in the state. Uh, I don't know if that's so much the case now, but it's real weird. The state bans the sale of fruity alcohol drinks at grocery stores and convenience stores. The law states such drinks must now have a state-approved labels on the front of products and contain capitalized letters in bold type telling consumers the drink contains alcohol and at what percentage. Because... They need to have it scream on there because I don't know why it's got to be so special in the state when you compare it to other places when they've just got, okay, this um, cooler area has got all the alcohol in it. Anything in it, we're just assuming it is. You can kind of partition it off without having such a pain in the ass rule about it. But their state, they're just going to do weird things about it. Where am I? I see a bird. It's just, just. 52, huh? We're just, I'm just going to guess. Because there is no way. Oh, fuck. <laughs> I thought I had more time. I clicked really fast, but it didn't, it didn't take it. It was Route 56. Well, that was a bad end, but I guess I was due for doing one of those because it's been a while. That's going to do it, as I just mentioned three seconds ago, but I said it again because I'm dumb. Oh, this was a long one. A lot of babbling on this. Is this state's done. We've only got like four, maybe five states left. I'd like to thank you all for watching. If you have any comments, questions, concerns, complaints, suggestions, hint, hints, tips, tricks, strategies, whatever you want. Could be related to this game or anything else that I do. Go ahead and put them in the comments of this video or any other one you want to. I will see them, I will read them, and I will get back to you. Um, I have, Like I said at the beginning of this video, I have a very busy day. 
is I've got the cooking thing that's going to be going up on Tuesday. Probably more magic stuff as well, depending on how I feel after that. I may even do the entire week's worth of GeoGuessr stuff, but that's unrelated to this video, other than to let you know. Keep checking out the channel for more stuff. There's a resurgence of stuff on the channel as of late. I kind of like doing it. We'll see how it goes. I'd like to thank you all again, and we'll see you real soon. Goodbye.